Hello, everyone, and welcome to Financial Accounting. Our topic today is the accounting cycle, accruals, and deferrals. In this video, we will cover deferrals, including deferred or prepaid expenses and unearned revenue. At the end of the period, we need to make adjusting entries to get the accounts up to date for the financial statements. Adjusting entries, also known as end of period adjustments, are journal entries that accountants prepare at the end of an accounting period to make sure the revenues and expenses are accurately recorded in the appropriate accounting period. The accrual basis dictates that revenues be recognized when earned and expenses be recognized when incurred. The accrual basis of accounting is considered to be in compliance with generally accepted accounting principles. Every adjusting entry involves a revenue or expense and an asset or liability. There are two broad categories of adjustments, deferrals and accruals. The first is when payments are made or cash is received before the expense or revenue is recognized. This category includes prepaid or deferred expenses, including depreciation, and unearned or deferred revenues. The second major category of adjustments is when cash is paid or received after the expense or revenue is recognized. These are very common adjustments. This category includes accrued expenses and accrued revenues. We will be covering accruals in the separate video. I am posting the link to the video here and in the description box. Let's look at converting assets to expenses first. When an adjusting entry is used to convert an asset to expense, it means that a transaction took place in a prior period. It involved the advance payment of an expense. Three common examples of adjusting entries to convert assets to expenses are the recognition of depreciation expense on plant assets, the using up of office supplies during the period, and the expiration of prepaid insurance. We need to make an adjusting entry at the end of the current period in order to recognize the converting of the prepaid asset into an expense. The asset account is reduced or credited and the expense account is increased or debited. Let's look at example when insurance is prepaid. On January 1st of the current year, Web company purchased a one-year insurance policy paying $2,400 in advance. The monthly expense is calculated as $2,400 divided by 12 months. The amount was charged to an asset account on expired insurance. Each month should reflect $200 of insurance expense, assuming web prepares financial statements monthly. Take a look at the journal entry made by web on January 1st to record the purchase of the policy. A debit or increase is made to the unexpired insurance account, which is an asset account, and a credit or decrease is made to the asset account cash for $2,400. Remember that assets are increased by debit and decreased by credit. The unexpired insurance account is also called a prepaid insurance. At the end of January, Web is going to prepare its financial statements. Let's look at the adjusting entry that is required at the end of the month to recognize a monthly insurance expense. The proper adjusting entry is to debit or increase the expense account, insurance expense, and to credit or decrease the asset account, unexpired insurance, for $200. Remember that expenses are increased by debit 
and decreased by credit. Web will make the suggesting entry at the end of each month. The adjusting entry is posted to the general ledger account. The asset and expired insurance has been partially converted into the expense account insurance expense. Both the asset account and the expense account are now carried at their proper balances. Now let's look at depreciation. Depreciation is the systematic and rational allocation of the cost of a depreciable asset to expense over its estimated useful life. There are many methods of depreciation. In this video, we will look at the straight line method. Keep in mind that an asset loses some of its utility and part of the asset is consumed as the depreciable asset is used to produce revenue. At the end of the accounting period, we need to record the expense related to the consumption of the depreciable asset. Depreciation expense is equal to the cost of purchase price less any expected salvage value divided by the estimated useful life. JJ's loan care should record depreciation expense of $50 per month, which is the cost of $2,500 divided by 50 months. Let's look at the adjusting entry required. There is no salvage value in our example, as the company doesn't expect the asset to have any salvage value at the end of the useful life. It's time to prepare an adjusting journal entry. The adjusting journal entry required on May 31st is to debit or increase depreciation expense on equipment and credit or increase the account accumulated depreciation on equipment for $50. The account accumulated depreciation on equipment is a contra asset account. A contra account is a reduction in a related account. In this case, accumulated depreciation will be shown on the balance sheet as a reduction in the equipment account. Keep in mind that depreciation is only an estimate. Remember that JJ's Lawn Care purchased a truck for $15,000 on May 1st. The truck has an estimated useful life of five years or 60 months. What is the depreciation expense for the months of May on the newly acquired truck? The answer is $250, which is 15,000 divided by 60 months. The proper adjusting entry is to debit depreciation expense on truck for $250 and credit accumulated depreciation on truck for the same amount. The accumulated depreciation account will appear on the balance sheet as a reduction in the truck account. Take a look at the partial balance sheet of JJ's Loan Care, which shows its plant assets. Notice that the contra accounts are subtracted from the related asset accounts. The cost of an asset less the accumulated depreciation is equal to book value of that asset. Keep in mind that book value is not intended to represent an asset's current market value. I have another video called how to calculate depreciation. I'm posting the link right here and in the description box in case you are interested to learn more. Here is also a video that shows how to prepare a depreciation schedule in Excel. The link is posted here and in the description box. Now let's look at the adjusting entry that converts a liability to a revenue. The adjusting entry is necessary when cash has been collected in advance of earning revenue. For example, cash is collected in advance when a magazine publishing company collects cash for a one or two year subscription. Other examples of transactions that require an adjusting entry to convert a liability to revenue are the sales of airline tickets or season tickets for a sports team. 
At the end of the accounting period, we need to record an adjusting entry to recognize the revenue earned during the period and to reduce the liability account. Let's take a closer look at how adjusting entries to convert liabilities to revenue are recorded. Web company is a landlord. On January 1st, Web received $6,000 in advance for a one-year rental on office space it owns. Because Web prepares monthly financial statements, it should recognize $500 per month in rental revenue. Let's see how this transaction was recorded by Web. On January 1st, Web debited cash for $6,000 and credited the liability account called unearned rent revenue for the same amount. Unearned revenue is not a revenue. Don't get misled by the word revenue. The key here is that it is unearned. Unearned revenue is a liability. Web must do something to earn this revenue. Let's look at the journal entry required on January 31st to recognize the revenue earned during the month. On January 31st, Web needs to debit or decrease the liability account and earned rent revenue and credit or increase the rental revenue account for $500, which is $6,000 divided by 12 months. The balance in the unearned rental revenue account at the end of January is $5,500, which is 11 months of unearned rent at $500 per month. The balance in the rental revenue account for January is $500. This amount will appear on Web's income statement. That's all for today. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. I will see you soon.